Have you ever felt the excitement of exploring something completely new? Imagine a world where we can travel endlessly through space. That's what the TV show Star Trek The Next Generation is all about. Do you remember the first time you watched it? As you keep watching, get ready for lots of surprises. There are moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and even cry. So pay attention to everything that happens. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal story about this show? Share it with us in the comments below. Your thoughts are important as we journey through the stars together. Star Trek The Next Generation is a beloved show that continues the story of the original Star Trek, drawing in new fans while standing on its own. The series is set aboard the USS Enterprise D, led by Captain John Luke Picard. The characters like Captain Picard, Dr. Beverly Crusher, and Data are memorable and capture fans' hearts. The show has great performances, exciting stories, and impressive effects. Standout episodes include Yesterday's Enterprise, Best of Both Worlds, and Cause and Effect. Even today, Star Trek The Next Generation remains a strong force in science fiction, with its great storytelling, memorable characters, and impressive visuals. For those who haven't seen it, exploring its universe is worth it. Whoopi Goldberg attended the 1986 Academy Awards with Michael J. Fox when she received a nomination for her role in The Color Purple. In the show, Wesley Crusher receives harsh treatment from Captain Picard, who once tells him to shut up. It's revealed in the novel Star Trek The Next Generation Death in Winter that before becoming captain of the Enterprise, Picard was in love with Beverly Crusher. This could explain why Picard treats Wesley poorly, possibly due to bitter feelings over Beverly marrying Picard's best friend, Jack. Wesley Crusher was voted online as one of television's most hated characters, perceived as annoying and arrogant. The episode Family was the only one where Brent Spiner did not appear. Star Trek The Next Generation debuted in 1987. The Starship Bozeman bears the hull number NCC-1941, a nod to model maker Gregory Jane's work on the film 1941. Throughout the series, writers planned to portray a shipboard wedding involving one of the characters. Initially, producers considered having Captain Picard permanently married, but instead decided on Chief O'Brien, who married in the episode Data's Day. Originally, O'Brien's wife was supposed to be a female crew member who replaced Wesley as the ship's con officer. Patrick Stewart, known for his role as Captain Picard, received the New York Theatre Critics Drama Desk Award for Best Solo Performance in 1993 for his portrayal in A Christmas Carol at the Broadhurst. Star Trek The Next Generation, premiering in 1987, inspired one of the earliest fandubs called Star Trek Sinlos in Weltraum. Two fans utilized a VCR, a microphone, and Star Trek sounds to create their version of some episodes. Initially circulated on VHS to a limited Star Trek fanbase in the mid-90s, the series gained wider recognition with the internet's growth. These episodes attained cult status and are showcased at Star Trek conventions. Paramount Pictures approved them, making their download legal. Diana Muldor often portrayed characters with the title Dr. F Notably, she played biologist Dr. Anne Mulhall in an original series episode, psychologist Dr. Miranda Jones in another, and physician Dr. Catherine Pulaski in the second season of The Next Generation. Each character exhibited an open-minded perspective towards the universe. James Cromwell received the 1979 Drama Log Award for Outstanding Performance for Terra Nova at the Mark Taper Forum Theater in Los Angeles, California. Whoopi Goldberg, along with other Star Trek stars Nichelle Nichols and Patrick Stewart, delivered eulogies at Gene Roddenberry's funeral in 1991. In a March 2021 interview with Collider, Wesley Snipes disclosed that he had been considered for the role of Geordi LaForge and expressed disappointment at not being cast. However, he now reflects on it positively, acknowledging that it led him to pursue other opportunities beyond television. CBS ceased airing reruns of T.J. Hooker in September 1987, coinciding with the debut of the show. These events offer insights into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and the impact of casting decisions on the series' trajectory. Michael Dorn, known for his role in the series, operates an old Air Force T-33 shooting star trainer jet, often referred to as his starship. Jonathan Frakes, along with six other actors, played the same character, Commander William T. Riker, in three different live-action series. Frakes also portrayed the transporter double of Riker in two other series. Using simple math, fans can convert stardates mentioned in episodes into standard calendar format. Each stardate unit equals 1,000 per year, starting from 2364, 
established in the season one finale. For example, the first episode, Stardate 41 on 153.7, translates to February 25, 2364. The series finale's Stardate 47A9 and 88 corresponds to December 26, 2370. This method helps fans understand the chronological sequence of events in the series. In the second season, Gates McFadden took a break from the show to be in the hunt for Red October. Ann Archer filled in for her during that time and did a great job. Levar Burton, who played Geordie LaForge, had shown his talent before on The Love Boat in an episode called Love is Blind. In an important episode called The Quality of Life, Data made a big decision to save Picard and LaForge. This decision hinted at what would happen to him later in Nemesis, where he meets his end. These connections in the story grabbed people's attention and showed how well thought out the characters were. Fans everywhere still love the show because of its great characters and interesting stories. This summary was, Jonathan Frakes, known for his role in the series, also displayed his talent as a jazz trombonist during his time on the show. Original series writers DC Fontana and David Gerald filed separate WGA arbitration suits against Gene Roddenberry, claiming they contributed significantly to the series' Bible and deserved co-creator credit. The suits were settled in favor of the writers with undisclosed settlements while Roddenberry kept sole creator credit. The terms of the settlements prevent any discussion about their details. Whoopi Goldberg, 30 years after her Golden Globe win for The Color Purple, won the vintage performance by an actress in 1985 at the first Vintage Film Awards. Star Trek The Next Generation debuted in 1987. In its early stages, producers had plans for Jordy to undergo an experimental medical procedure to restore his natural eyesight and ditch his visor. However, they scrapped the idea as Geordi had become a positive role model for the disabled community. James Cromwell, known for portraying us presidents in various films, including Lyndon B. Johnson and George Bush, appeared in the series. His father, John Cromwell, directed Abe Lincoln in Illinois in 1940. Patrick Stewart, famous for his role as Captain John Luke Picard, had a habit of tugging on his uniform when he got up in the show. This gesture was dubbed the Picard Maneuver by Jonathan Frakes, who portrayed William Riker, and the name stuck. Whoopi Goldberg, the second African-American woman to win an Academy Award, joined the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation. In the early seasons, many writers felt constrained by Gene Roddenberry's utopian vision, leading some to quit. However, when Roddenberry took a lesser role, remaining writers felt more freedom. While Roddenberry forbade interpersonal conflicts among main characters, this changed over time as the utopian behavior evolved. Originally, the Ferengi were intended as the main adversaries, but audiences found them too comical. Eventually, the Borg emerged as the series' ultimate nemesis. Patrick Stewart, known for his role as Captain Picard in the series, was featured on a commemorative postage stamp celebrating the Star Trek franchise alongside other actors such as William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. The stamp was issued in 2020. James Cromwell, who worked with David Warner in The Man with Two Brains, appeared in Star Trek First Contact in 1996. David Warner was also part of the Star Trek series, appearing in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country in 1991. Lieutenant Worf wore a golden Klingon baldric in the first season, which was reused from the original series. In the second season, he transitioned to wearing a silver baldric designed by Dorinda Wood. Worf continued to wear this silver baldric throughout the series, except for one instance in the final episode's past timeline when he wore the gold baldric again due to wear and tear on the silver one. In the second season of the series, Gates McFadden, who played Dr. Crusher, was dismissed, with her character's departure explained as taking a post at Starfleet Medical. Dr. Pulaski, played by another actress, filled in but left after that season without any explanation. She was scarcely mentioned afterward, leaving her post-Enterprise whereabouts unknown. Jonathan Frakes, known for his role as Commander Riker, was considered for the role of the Master and Doctor Who the movie, which ultimately went to Eric Roberts. The special effects team often used ordinary objects to create futuristic effects. For example, a shampoo bottle and a pantyhose container were used to make a hovering killer probe in one episode. In another, the edge of the universe was simulated by bouncing a laser beam off a beer can. The sound of sliding doors was achieved by recording sound editor James Wolvington's shoe squeaking against the floor. Levar Burton met his wife, Stephanie Cozart Burton, during the filming of Roots the Gift in 1988. 
They tied the knot on the same day as Barack Obama and Michelle Obama on October 3, 1992. John DeLancey, along with Leonard Nimoy and writer-producer Nat Segaloff, formed Alien Voices in 1996. Alien Voices specializes in audio remakes of classic science fiction and fantasy stories like The Time Machine and The Lost World. Throughout the series, several references are made to William Shakespeare. Prior to being cast as Picard, Patrick Stewart had acted primarily with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Levar Burton has appeared alongside Madge Sinclair in several productions, including Almost a Man, One in a Million, The Ron Leflore Story, Guyana Tragedy, The Story of Jim Jones, and Star Trek The Next Generation. He also portrayed her character's husband in Roots. Despite being shot on 35M film, the visual effects in Star Trek The Next Generation were captured on video to save money. However, this decision caused problems when the series was remastered for Blu-ray, requiring extensive restoration work. Morris Hurley, a producer and writer, was a contentious figure on the show. Herbert J. Wright left citing Hurley's close relationship with Gene Roddenberry. Hurley's dislike for Gates McFadden led to her departure in the second season, though she returned after his departure due to allegations of sexual harassment. Tracy Torme, another writer, also clashed with Hurley and left the show, later basing a character in his series Sliders on him. John DeLancey is well known for playing Q in the Star Trek TV series. He appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Voyager. This role made him popular among sci-fi fans. Whoopi Goldberg, famous for her roles, was working as a waitress in 1978 when she saw a sad event. She saw PSA Flight 182 crash after colliding mid-air in San Diego. This event deeply affected her, and she still doesn't like flying. Jonathan Frakes, another important actor in the series, acted alongside Kate Mulgrew in many shows. They worked together on Camp Nowhere, Gargoyles, Star Trek Voyager, and Star Trek Nemesis. These performances show how many actors are connected in Star Trek The Next Generation, and how their different talents helped make it successful. In Skin of Evil, Tasha Yar became the first regular character in the series to meet a permanent end, staying true to Star Trek's tendency to dispatch Enterprise security officers during away missions. This event reflected the show's established pattern of risk and consequences for its characters. Marina Cities, a London native, initially portrayed her character Troy with an accent meant to sound alien due to Troy being half-human, half-betazoid. However, when Majel Barrett appeared as Troy's mother, El Waxana, she spoke in an American accent. Subsequently, Cities adapted Troy's accent to an Eastern European sound, representing Troy's human father's origin. During a television interview in the first season, Cities shared that her inspiration for the accent came from an Israeli friend whom she considered to have an exotic-sounding voice. Dr. Pilaski, a regular character throughout season two, never found her name listed in the opening credits. Instead, her name consistently appeared under special guest appearance in the guest stars section, despite her significant role in the series. These insights offer a glimpse into the unique character dynamics and behind-the-scenes decisions that shaped Star Trek The Next Generation early on. Each detail, from character deaths to accent choices, contributes to the overall narrative of the iconic sci-fi series. Brent Spiner appeared in Star Trek The Next Generation as Data. In October 2004, he made three guest appearances on another Star Trek series called Enterprise as Eric Soong, an ancestor of Noonien Soong, Data's creator. He also portrayed Noonien Soong in two episodes of the Next Generation titled Brothers and Inheritance. Gates McFadden played Dr. Beverly Crusher in The Next Generation. She also portrayed a doctor, Dr. Caroline Ryan, in the movie The Hunt for Red October. There was a set called the Grand Corridor planned for the Enterprise D's saucer section in the next generation. However, it was too expensive to maintain and was never built. Later, it was recreated as part of an attraction called Star Trek The Experience The Klingon Encounter. Star Trek The Next Generation, which aired in 1987, was a TV series filled with subtle references to various aspects of pop culture. The crew, many of whom were fans of Japanese animation, often incorporated nods to their favorite shows. For instance, in the episode The Quality of Life, the Exocumps were inspired by the robot Namno from Dirty Pear Ova. Additionally, references to characters from Yurusei Yatsura were sprinkled throughout various episodes. The Akira-class starships were a double reference to both the anime film Akira and director Akira Kurosawa. 
The alien race of the Nausicaans was named after the title character from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Contrary to popular belief, the USS Yamato in Season 2 was named after the World War II Japanese battleship Yamato, not as an intentional homage to space battleship Yamato, also known as Star Blazers. James Cromwell, who appeared in Star Trek First Contact, had previously worked with Ron Perlman in the film Romeo is Bleeding. Similarly, Gates McFadden, known for her role on the show, had experience as a Muppeteer and movement coordinator for Jim Henson prior to joining the cast. In summary, Star Trek The Next Generation was a series filled with subtle references and connections to various aspects of popular culture, showcasing the diverse interests and backgrounds of its cast and crew. Patrick Stewart, known for his roles in both Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine, notably delivered the first line in the former series and the last line in the latter. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek The Next Generation, initially planned to introduce gay characters to the show. However, after his passing, executive producer Rick Berman took over and scrapped these plans. Despite efforts from various writers and actors to include LGBT representation, it wasn't until Star Trek Beyond that an LGBT character, Hikaru Sulu, was revealed as gay, partly as a tribute to George Takei, the original actor for the character. Whoopi Goldberg made history as the 10th person, 4th woman, and first black recipient of the EGOT, joining a prestigious list of accomplished entertainers. Diana Muldor, well known for her roles in other Star Trek episodes, played Lieutenant Commander Anne Mulhall, PhD, and Dr. Miranda Jones. She portrayed both characters with depth and skill, impressing audiences in different episodes. James Cromwell, famous for his roles in Oscar-nominated movies like Babe and The Artist, also appeared in five Star Trek episodes. His talent stood out in each project he worked on. Michael Dorn, recognized for his distinctive voice, voiced the captain in the Icebox Com series Starship Regulars. He added authority and seriousness to the show. Fans worldwide still appreciate the work these actors did in Star Trek The Next Generation. This text was, In the series, in Sin Ro Laren's first name subtly hints at her eventual decision to leave John Luke Picard and Starfleet to join the Maquis. The name Ro parallels the term rogue, indicating someone who acts dishonestly or without principles, which aligns with her actions in the episode Preemptive Strike. Patrick Stewart's career is notable for its connections with other actors across different projects. He shared the screen with Tom Hardy in Star Trek Nemesis, where Hardy played a clone of his character, John Luke Picard. Both actors have also appeared in adaptations of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, though in different versions, Stewart in the 1979 miniseries and Hardy in the 2011 film. Additionally, Stewart worked with James McAvoy in X-Men Days of Future Past, where McAvoy played a younger version of Stewart's character, Professor Xavier, this connection is further enriched by both actors' involvement in adaptations of Dune, Stewart in the 1984 movie, and McAvoy in Children of Dune. Jonathan Frakes is among a select group of actors, including Mark Alamo, Rosalind Keo, Jeffrey Combs, John D. Lancey, Michael Dorn, and Tim Russ, who have appeared in ten different seasons across the Star Trek franchise. His appearances span from the series he started in through to guest roles in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, and Star Trek Enterprise. This breadth of involvement highlights a significant contribution to the franchise's continuity and character development across its various iterations. Majel Barrett and Gene Roddenberry had a wedding in a Shinto Buddhist style on August 6, 1969, considering it their true marriage. They made their marriage official with a civil ceremony on December 29, 1969. They had a son named Rod Roddenberry. Barrett became the stepmother of Dawn Roddenberry and Darlene Anita Roddenberry Baca. Unfortunately, Darlene Anita Roddenberry Baca died in a car accident on October 29, 1995. Majel Barrett's grandson, Zale Eugene Roddenberry, was born on August 6, 2013, weighing 6 pounds, 11 ounces. The show lasted for seven seasons, briefly holding the record for the longest-running American live-action science fiction TV series. Later, it was tied by its spin-offs Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. In 2002, The X-Files claimed the record after nine seasons. Then, Stargate SG-1 surpassed it with ten seasons, followed by Smallville with the same number of seasons but more episodes. Currently, Supernatural holds the record with 14 seasons. 
Brent Spiner played Lieutenant Commander Data on three different series, Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Enterprise, and SpongeBob SquarePants. In the series, Michael Dorn played Worf, who later appeared on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, making him the only character regularly featured on two Star Trek series. Another character, Chief O'Brien, appeared regularly on DS9 and recurringly on The Next Generation. Whoopi Goldberg, known for her role as Guinan, is among six actresses to achieve the EGOT status, winning an Oscar, Tony, Emmy, and Grammy. The others are Helen Hayes, Rita Moreno, Audrey Hepburn, Jennifer Hudson, and Viola Davis. Although frequently mentioned, Dr. Seller, a Vulcan, and Beverly Crusher, the chief medical officer, are never seen together. Dr. Seller, portrayed by Susie Plaxon, appeared only once during Gates McFadden's hiatus when Kate Pulaski temporarily filled the role. In Inheritance, it is disclosed that Data's weight was approximately 120 kilograms or 265 pounds. Despite Data's consistent dimensions, the weight serves as an approximate measure. Patrick Stewart and Kelsey Grammer shared the screen in five different productions, including Star Trek The Next Generation, Frasier, X-Men The Last Stand, Legends of Oz Dorothy's Return, and X-Men Days of Future Past. Tim Russ, who later portrayed Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager, was considered for the role of Geordi. These details offer insights into the behind-the-scenes aspects of the series, providing a glimpse into the actors' collaborative work and the casting decisions made during the show's production. Star Trek The Next Generation, aired from 1987 onwards, featured an alto relievo display of scale sculptures of six Earth vessels commissioned as the USS Enterprise in the Enterprise D's observation lounge until the end of Season 4. However, starting from Season 5 till the series' end, these sculptures were replaced with a standard wall without explanation. The previous display returned in Star Trek First Contact, featuring seven golden models of previous Enterprises in the Enterprise E's Observation Lounge. An exception occurred in the final episode's past timeline, where the sculptures briefly reappeared. Patrick Stewart, known for his role in the series, was considered for the role of the master in Doctor Who the movie, which ultimately went to Eric Roberts. In a 1989 interview with Starlog magazine, Jonathan Frakes revealed that he felt the series had achieved recognition when it was satirized in Mad Magazine. Patrick Stewart, along with Cone Meany and Armin Shimerman, appeared in the pilots of two Star Trek series, The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn as Worf also featured in both TNG and DS9, and John DeLancey appeared in TNG, DS9, and Voyager. The producers of The Next Generation adopted an ensemble cast format, unlike the original Star Trek series, which centered on Kirk, Spock, and McCoy in every episode. Instead, they focused on characters like Geordi Laforge, Deanna Troy, and Wesley Crusher in various episodes. This approach aimed to provide a more balanced spotlight on supporting characters, setting a precedent for later Star Trek series like Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise. Jonathan Frakes and his wife Jeannie Francis portrayed a married couple in three different productions Camp Nowhere, Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman, and Third Rock from the Sun. Notably, in the North and South series, Frakes' character played the brother-in-law to Jeannie's character, Brett, who was married to his character's brother, Billy Hazard. In summary, The Next Generation marked Patrick Stewart's involvement in two Star Trek series pilots, and the show's producers pioneered an ensemble cast format that influenced subsequent series. Jonathan Frakes and Jeannie Francis shared on-screen marital roles in multiple productions, showcasing their versatility in acting. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek The Next Generation, was surprised to realize that there were no African-American characters in science fiction on screen before the show premiered. When he had lunch with Whoopi Goldberg, she expressed her interest in being part of the show. This led Roddenberry to create the role of Guinan specifically for her. The series gained significant acclaim over the years. British Trade Weekly Broadcast ranked it as the 10th best U.S. television show ever. As of 2023, Whoopi Goldberg remains one of eight black actresses to have won an Academy Award. The other recipients, in chronological order, are Hattie McDaniel, Hal Berry, Jennifer Hudson, Monique, Octavia Spencer, Viola Davis, and Regina King. Patrick Stewart, upon joining the series, was relatively unknown to American networks. His trailer simply read British Shakespeare actor. Diana Muldor made an appearance in the TV episode Fandango, a portion of which can be heard on Pink Floyd's album The Wall. 
Patrick Stewart underwent training as an actor at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, one of the world's most selective drama schools. The school admits only 28 students out of approximately two 500 applications for its three-year B, a acting course equating to an acceptance rate of around 1%. Brent Spiner, who hails from Houston, Texas, starred in The Aviator, a movie about Howard Hughes. He was born in Houston. Michael Dorn, also known for his role in Star Trek The Next Generation, was considered for a part in Doctor Who the movie, but the role went to Eric Roberts instead. Levar Burton, recognized for his appearances on The Big Bang Theory, completes the trio of notable actors from the show. These actors from Star Trek The Next Generation have shown their skills in various roles and types of entertainment. Their diverse talents have made them popular with audiences. They've left a mark on both science fiction and mainstream movies. Whoopi Goldberg expressed interest in appearing on the show before its debut, but didn't hear back for nearly a year, as producers didn't initially take her inquiry seriously. At the age of eight, Goldberg performed with the children's program The Hudson Guild, and the Rubenstein Children's Theater. Jonathan Frakes developed his trademark beard while filming North and South Book II, Love and War in 1986, inspired by a style from the American Civil War era. He continued to wear it into the second season of the show. Majelle Barrett, known for her role in the original Star Trek series, appeared in both the first and last episodes of the show. Notably, she is one of 32 actors to have starred in both the original Star Trek series and its spin-offs, including The Next Generation. Barrett holds the distinction of being the only actor to appear in all five live-action Star Trek series. Additionally, she provided voices for Star Trek The Animated Series and completed voice-over work for J.J. Abrams' Star Trek remake before her passing. Natalie Janogulik, who was initially cast for a role in The X-Files, ended up being replaced by Stephen Williams just before the first scenes with her character X were set to air. Unfortunately, these scenes never made it to the audience. Levar Burton, known for his role in The Next Generation, took on the role of narrator for the audio recording of The Watsons' Go to Birmingham 1963 by Christopher Paul Curtis. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a glimpse into the diverse experiences of the actors involved in The Next Generation and its connections to the broader Star Trek franchise. Levar Burton starred in the series while hosting Reading Rainbow. The show's top episode, Reading Rainbow, The Bionic Bunny Show, featured a look behind the scenes and included bloopers from the series, a rare release. Jonathan Frakes portrayed Commander William T. Riker across five series, this one, Voyager, Enterprise, Family Guy, and Picard. Michael Dorn, cast as Worf, broke from his previous roles, embracing a deeper voice for the character. His portrayal allowed him to move away from his usual nice guy image. Michael Dorn, a devoted fan of Star Trek, portrayed the character Worf in The Next Generation. Alongside him, John Anderson, Rosalind Keo, and David Ogden Stiers, who appeared in M.A.S.H., also took roles in the series. Patrick Stewart, known for his role as Captain John Luke Picard, was considered for various guest roles in Doctor Who. These included Professor Watson, Auken, Commander Scott, and others. He was even considered for the roles of the Doctor and the Master in Doctor Who the movie. Stewart was offered the role of the narrator in The End of Time. John Anderson and Trisha O'Neill both appeared in an episode of MacGyver called Phoenix Under Siege. Brent Spiner was on a game show called To Tell the Truth in 1972, where he pretended to be a coronet playing cabbie, but didn't fool anyone. James Cromwell played a made-up president in The Sum of All Fears and the real president Lyndon B. Johnson. Donald Moffat, who also played Johnson, acted as a made-up president in Clear and Present Danger. He was known for playing many different roles. Tricia O'Neill did well in MacGyver and other shows. Brent Spiner did more than just Star Trek The Next Generation. James Cromwell could convincingly play a range of characters. Donald Moffat's role as President Johnson in Clear and Present Danger was impressive. These actors have all left their mark on the entertainment world, entertaining audiences with their performances.